What kind of challenges are you facing already? <laughs> Say what you mean, Dan. This is a safe space. Videographer. He's right there. <laughs> I'm on about the part time. I'm studying something. <laughs> <laughs> We are back at the Verify build and I'm excited to say that the kitchen is almost, almost finished. We've swung to site, we're gonna pop in and see how the guys are getting on. Hopefully we can press them to get it done by the end of the week. <laughs> Let's go inside. We are in the kitchen at the Verify build. I'm joined by one half of the Kitchen Phoenix. The other half, right over there. But Dan, yeah, eating, <laughs> eating screws apparently. <laughs> Dan, I just wanted to jump in and catch up with everything that's been going on. The kitchen, as you can see, has made some amazing progress. Before we go into like the colour and the style and everything, how long is it going to take you to finish? It feels like it's like a day or so. Yeah, like. it's got the appliances to put in and the sink and hob, yeah. so probably a reminder of today and tomorrow, really. What styles have we got here, mate? We've got the shaker, which is a generally a traditional good seller. In case people don't know, what is shaker? What does that mean? Shaker is basically a four-piece door with a, a middle like a um, hardboard middle. It's like a country style, you see them a lot. So rather than like a, just a clean flat panel on the outside, you've got a bit of detail. Yeah, it gives a bit of character really. It's uh, azure blue and then the work top. We've got the Calcutta marble. Calcutta marble? Calcutta marble. Colour, style, design is so subjective a lot, of the, a lot of the time. What is the process that you guys normally go through? If someone's going to come to the kitchen Phoenix and say, hey, I need the kitchen. What does that process look like? First, we'd arrange, obviously, somebody to go out and do a survey of the house so you can get the right measurements. Mm -hmm. And then we'd invite them into the showroom for them to have a look at the kitchens that we've got on offer, worktops, appliances, and all that sort of stuff. And then, obviously, we'll sit them down and do design while they're there so they can pick and choose it. They don't like that there, they do this, and then just manoeuvre it around. When they choose the layout and the plan of how they want the kitchen, we'll then go into design for looking for whether it's modern, traditional, or you can even get German kitchens, which are completely different. And then we just go from there, really. It's just a continuous process. The people settle on sort of the layout of the kitchen before they then dive into like the details of what they want it to look like with the door panel. It depends, really. I mean, because obviously a dark kitchen here, because obviously you've got the lights, you've got the key, key lights. Key light roof windows. But then if you were to do it over there, you'd obviously go for a lighter kitchen because yeah. it's a lot darker over there. So you go for a lighter colour. So it just depends on the layout of your kitchen and obviously whether you're having it in a lighter area or a darker area. So you just go with what contrasted. You wouldn't have a dark colour in a dark part of the room because it just wouldn't look right. You know, we've gone for the island here with the appliances that are built in. How much of that do you find is like customer led versus what you like to leave with? Do you let the customer just make all the decisions? Or do you go, no, stop. Yeah, yeah they give their designs and their ideas and we can advise. I mean, this island, it was a backwards and forth whether to have it or not. But then obviously the way it was, it, it just made sense because the cook is obviously down there, got mm. the harp and then we'll have an extractor fan above. And if you've got friends and family around sat there, you can still be cooking while you're talking rather than yeah. being in the living room and you're stood over here doing it. I just think for the size of the room, it's just a good entertainment. So like for the layout of this room, like you say, whereas if it was in that corner, you'd be very much back against, back against the rest of the room, but the way this is laid out, you got dishes over here, you could be cooking, and then there's probably like a living space that's happening right there, right? Yeah, so you got the sink that's going in there, washer and dishwasher there, and obviously the integrated fridge. This is a fairly sizable kitchen. Let's just go with the installation first. How long does that normally take? Well, this one, obviously, we've had to drop, we've generally done little bits, pulled away, come back, because obviously, it's just the order of when people were ready, flooring yeah. and stuff like that, about to pull off some of the floor to be put down. But generally, if you used to do it and you used to run the job complete, you'd come in, you'd, you'd get your plaster done if it needs plastering, then the floor, and then basically work back up, and then the kitchen would come into a complete room, so we'd put the kitchen mm -hmm. in. Then you follow through with the tiles, and obviously the electrician comes through if they've had any additional sockets or the changing the face plates. It just works on that process, so it's just a smooth projection, which is a bit difficult here because Obviously, we're all different businesses, so you have to work around their schedule. Do you just fit kitchen units, countertops and stuff, or like how, how far do, can you go with the kitchen units? We do most things. We do flooring, we do tiling. Luke is a plasterer. Do anything apart from obviously anything that you legally need qualifications for, mm -hmm. so or electrics and gas. We've got trades that cover that area. Yeah. Well, we offer a full turnkey. We basically take control of the room and we just do it completely. So when the next time the customer comes in, it's done, dusted, mm -hmm. all wrapped up, ready for them to make the tea. Is there anything you wish that customers oh. knew about what you do that they that they don't? First day or two, obviously they see a lot going on, the cupboards going in, this, that and the other, and then give it two, three, four days later, 
it looks like nothing's happening. It's the lots of appliances, things like that, handles that they don't actually pick up because they're small things. I think on the first day, you got a large number of like the units in and on the wall. Yeah. And like that looked like a huge amount of progress from the first go, but you're saying that like day two or three, when it's just end panels and the finer details, yeah. there doesn't look like much movement. Yeah, because they're not <laughs> looking at the bigger picture because they've already seen the cupboards in place. When they come in, they're looking at what they haven't seen. So like you say, the end panels, the handles on the doors, things like that, they won't generally look at mm -hmm. because they already know that them units are there existed. They need to understand the process of what's going on. Probably more to do in a kitchen, which is not really noticed, than just fitting kitchen units and putting doors and handles on. Have you ever had a problem customer? <laughs> Without <noticed>. swearing. <laughs> We've had a couple where they pick faults with nothing. It's because they've come to a point where they can't afford to pay the remainder. Mm. So they drag their feet thinking that, oh, gives a bit more time. So they annoy us because they're calling us back for nothing. Little petty little things. We always give like a two week. So say if we finish today, you'll have two weeks from today to report any snagging. After those two weeks have gone, you pay the final payment. And then if you stumble across something then after the two weeks and give us a call, this is there, that's there. It's not classed as a snag, they'll be classed as a recall, so they'll be charged. We've had one where Luke's gone and done the ceiling, but we had to pull a section of the ceiling down because they had the leak upstairs. But then they couldn't work out why there was a hole in the ceiling when we was working in the bathroom. If I was to call the Kitchen Phoenix, how much is it going to cost me to get this kitchen in and done? We generally range from about like seven and a half up to about 40 plus, mm -hmm. depends on the customers. So this one was 10,000 and a couple of pence or something like that. Yeah, but that was including VAT. So if you take the 20% off it, it's around about that seven and a half grand mark. You just said a range of seven and a half to like 40 grand plus. That feels like a huge range. Why is that? Worktop. I mean, you could go for granite, quartz, you can have acrylic worktop. You imagine the acrylic worktop, which is what a lot of people are going for, it's so labour intensive. For like a length of this, so the same as the island, you pay near around five, six hundred pounds just for a length, and then you've got to polish it in processes to bring it to life. So you'd be looking at like three, four days to get it all done. So that's where it starts getting more expensive. Again, doors, even though you think that doors are doors, they have different style of doors, different costs for doors. Have you noticed like the cost of materials? Like how has that impacted you? Has it impacted you? It fluctuates. The timber is, is not not to an extent, but it, it's the same as copper really. It, it's, it's gone up and down. Nothing's manufactured in the UK anymore timber wise. Anything that is made in the UK, 99% of the time it's come from out of the country, mainly in Europe and stuff, but there's not really a great deal of timber and that that comes in. Since you left Brexit, it's just gone through the roof. Cost of materials has, it's gone up. I've never, I haven't never seen it come down. How do you price yourselves as the, as the prices fluctuate? Do you try and eat some of it? Or are you just passing that straight on to the customer? You try and be as fair as possible with the customer. It's going into their property, so they have to foot it, the bill somewhere. Obviously, we, like you say, we can't carry, carry it all. Thank you for your time, mate. I appreciate you taking a minute to uh, speak to me. I'll go back to my fridge. If you want to see the full and final result of the house, completely from top to finish, top to finish, top to bottom, soup to nuts, everything in between, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video.